Hello and welcome to another quick session of running through the ArcSight solution and how to use the particular various components. In this particular example, I'm actually going to work through the console. This is the fat client that you'd run on your workstation. In this example, I'm actually going to be running it on a uh, Mac uh, laptop here. Uh, of course, it does work on Linux and Windows as well. I just wanted to show it running on a Mac uh, just because it, it does work. Um, so what do we have? And, uh, you know, what I would say is that there is a number of things that, uh, that that people highlight and say that the console is complex and difficult to use uh, and it lacks some of the features of, say, for example, a web interface. Now, I want to step through some of this and I want to walk through how you would use, how you would uh, manipulate the interface and some of the capabilities it provides as well uh, and, and why, for example, some of this might be very difficult to do with a web interface specifically. So when you load it up, uh, you actually get presented effectively this. Now, you may see particular parts of this, this panel here, but I'll talk about what those are in a second. Uh, we've got the usual things to do with menus. We've got some particular buttons that are highlighted here that will actually trigger various activity as well. Uh, th that will give you an illustration of some of the things that are occurring and some of the things that are uh, happening within the system, for example, like notifications and uh, alerts and so on. Um, but in essence, we've got these three particular panes. Now, they're indicated by these little um, uh, icons here. So we have the navigation panel. We have the viewer panel, and we have the, what, they call, what they call the final one, which is the inspect edit. So if I just show the first one. So this is the navigator panel. This shows you the breakdown of the various components and what we call resources within the system. Now, what is a resource? Well, it's actually, I, I dropped this down. We can see all the various resources that are available. It could be, for example, an active channel. It's a view of the data. It could be um, some setup to do with some dashboards or some filters or even the rules that are configured within a system. They're all available within this with regards to the resources. Everything is a resource. Even the users of the system itself are classified as a resource. So I'm actually going to look at uh, active channels here. Now, what we then do is then we break this down into groups. I have my own particular group here. And this is because I'm logged in as user admin here. We can actually see uh, that we're a particular workstation we've logged in here, but I've actually logged in as user admin, uh, admin here. And I have my own couple of uh, little channels there. But I can group all these other channels together. Now, they could be ones that came with the system, for example, foundation stuff, and I can look at ArcSight Express, and there's some channels there. Uh, I could have some other channels that are being defined as part of some uh, solutions that I have installed. So these are uh, ArcSight solutions that are available, others are available as well, and you could group them that way too. Of course, we can also even put them in a public area or see personal groupings as well. So these are the other users in the systems. Now notice there's a little lock symbol there. That means that those will require you to have the particular user access to do that as well. And that comes within the group and, and role management of the particular users as well. But you can see that logically things are grouped together. Uh, you can group those any way you like. They can be groups of groups no problems as part of that. You can be groups of groups of groups. Uh, that's not an issue. Break, break them into a logical one. Now, I chose this one as a good example. Uh, I could have it grouped by compliance. So this is particular ISO standards. I could have it grouped by uh, particular usage. So this is application monitoring. I could have it grouped by anything that I choose to do. Uh, and I can define those groups and share that with other users of the systems as well. And then if anything I can create, I can create it locally as well. So that's the navigation panel. Then we get the, I'm actually going to bring it up at the same time, the viewer panel. So the viewer panel itself shows the view of the data. So in this case, uh, we're looking at active channels here. I could look at, uh, I just open an active channel, for example, my demo live one. Uh, it just opens it up. It, I view it as a tab within this particular, so there's my demo live. This is what they call an active channel, and it's just loading and displaying the data, and there's all my data displayed. Uh, there we've got the information uh, that in a tabular format that we can manipulate. So this is just a view of the data. It's a very simple and very straightforward way of, of doing that. But I've got this tabular way that I can step through the particular panels uh, and jump back to where I was. So that's my my, uh, my my viewer panel, <laughs> effectively, where I can actually see and render the data, whether it's in a table or whether it's in a dashboard or whether it's in a, a combination of ways of viewing that data. If I was to actually click on one of these, uh, I would actually go into the log data itself. So in this particular example, this is some, some data that's been received. So I can see there's a, a firewall drop. If I just 
double click on that, it would actually open the viewer panel for this as well. So the inspect edit. Now, let me just, because I've got limited real estate, let me just turn those panels off for a second. So I'm actually looking at an individual log message that's been received. So we can see that it's a, a UDP, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, there's my categorization. This is individual log data that's been received by what we call connectors or smart connectors, and then fit into the system. Uh, we've done some uh, what we call normalization and parsing of the data to process it to, to add some meaning to it. Now, we can see that there's some blank panels there, just a little hint and, and uh, uh, nugget of useful information here. Uh, you can actually define what called a field set, so that limits the number of fields that are displayed. That's this here. Or I can actually just hide the empty row. So if I just click the button, it hides all the empty rows. So now I only see what's data that's relevant uh, to this particular event, and I can see. So in this, this example, we can see that it's come from a, a checkpoint firewall, uh, that it's an accept, and, and so on. We've got lots of data in there. But that's my inspect edit. So if I just bring up all of these panes again, so we can see... Navigator always goes on the left, the, the, the viewer element goes in the middle, and the inspect edit goes on the right. And of course, everything I, I use within the system allows me to jump between those panes. Now, it looks very complicated now that I have these three together and I've got limited real estate. So yes, it, it's worthwhile having a large monitor, but the reason for doing this is that we can get to jump around. We can, we can do things, we can edit things quite nicely. So for example, I'm just gonna use this as a very quick example. In this particular view of my what we call my active channel, um, I can actually pause the data. Now, data is being received as I'm, I'm actually talking about it. So what I can do is I can uh, use this little timeline uh, editor, as we'd normally see on a, uh, uh, many systems to do with time these days. We can actually just pause it. So I'll just pause it so it's not going to update a second. What I can do is, for example, I can edit the filter that's been defined. So it's only showing me particular events. So if I just hover over it, it actually tells me what the conditions are. So it says that it's non-ArcSide internal events and that it's not uh, it's not a uh, it comes from standard rules that it's not annotated etc etc so I can actually edit that and if I just click it it will actually open that up into the inspect edit panel and now we can actually go to the to the actual fields and so on but for example I might be doing something here and go oh actually I want to put another filter in there so um, I just need to create something of course what I could do is I could just jump back over here go to my filters and I could either look at an existing filter or if I wanted to I could just create a new filter. The great power of this is I'm going backwards and forwards between all of this components. I can do a new filter, it opens up a tab up here so again I see this tab format again I can jump back and forward I can create new filter I can create some conditions in here let me just move that up out of the way and say I'm just looking for um, type equal to. In fact, if I just drop that down, it'll tell me what it is. Correlation, etc. Uh, and I can just apply that. It creates a new filter for me there. I can then jump back to my active channel. And then what I can do is I can very quickly just put filters, new filter, and have it added automatically. So we can see that that's my filter. So I haven't had to leave that pane. Now, again, this is a good illustration of that, that why this works within this particular way of doing things is that I can create other parts of the resources or the elements of what I need to do for the configuration and use it in something that I'm doing, but while looking at the log data itself. This becomes much more important when we start doing rules and start mapping that to use cases as well. So, a couple of other things to bear in mind and consider as part of this. So let me just bump those two out of the way for a second. Let's just dig into active channels for a second. First thing to consider here is uh, we're, we're just looking at the data. This is just a standard view of standard fields. Uh, of course, I could just go over this particular field here and I can right mouse click and I can add and remove and, and do whatever I want to to the various columns. I can even customize those columns and have composite uh, fields as well. So I can edit these as well. I'll dig into that more in a minute. What I want to do is illustrate some of the base concepts of part of ArcSight and why that it operates in a particular manner. Now we actually see this initial column here. It's color coded because it's based on the uh, the actual. 
priority of events now in this particular time slice here so this this hour worth of data here so you can see the, the start and the end time it's about an hour uh, of information here within that we can see there's a good spread of, of colors here uh, very high is dark red to very low being green uh, and actually just summarizes that information there so we can see there's a whole mixture of events uh, of different kinds of priorities and that's great because we want to see that some things are high priority some things are low priority but if I just scroll down a second I actually I can see um, that there are some lightning symbols now that indicates that that's a correlation event that's occurred so um, that's a different kind of event now what I want to do is I'm going to dig into just double click on that that particular event here that's just a normal a blue low priority event and actually scroll down here we can see it's come from a firewall uh, actually going to a bit further we can see this has come through from checkpoints and so on so it's it's a low priority it's some relevant data and it'll support a use case that we want to do but it's what we call a base event so we can see type equals base so this has come from a log source um, if I actually look at this particular correlated event, so again, I just double click on it to actually view the event, and we'll see that this particular event will be what we call a correlation event. Now that's different because now a correlation event uh, is re relevant to what's actually been created from a correlation rule. So now we can see that this is a correlation event. This actually is referred to by, I click on that particular event, uh, I can actually see the underlying event that was that was used for that and that would actually be what we'll call a base event and that's great because we want to know this kind of information but we can see there's two different types of event within this and that's that's important and critical to know because everything within the ArcSight solution is effectively an event uh, what does that mean well it means that there's there's things that we can do and there's things that we can manipulate within the system as part of that so uh, if I just look at uh, something else for a second just to illustrate some of this so if I look at a different channel for a second uh, what I can do is I can look at administration and just look at system events now we just hit play on that one now one of the things to bear in mind again a little nugget to to be considerate as on this one is I've got lots of these little tabs up open here so it, it's always a good idea just to keep on top of these uh, and uh, close them out when you don't need them uh, so I'll just close a couple of these because these will be updating in the background and it's relevant to understand how the console works and what it's doing as part of that as well So there we go. Now we're just looking at the system events. Now everything that the system is doing is generating an event effectively. So we can see that there is a number of things occurring. We can see some monitoring events. We can see what we call add to an active list information here, where it's tracking state of what's going on. Uh, there's there's a whole lot of stuff here, and uh, you'll see there's lots of event information here. Monitor events to do with uh, something has been executed and run. Uh, we'll see there's a whole lot of information to do with dashboards being opened and, and closed. Uh, we can see there's more lists and so on. So there's a whole amount of information that's going on. So in, in essence, there are there are three effective types of events. There's base events, so events being received from the log sources. There's correlation events that, that have been triggered through a correlation rule that's occurred. And then there's finally system or internal events that have been generated by the system as part of its normal activity. Now, the great thing is, of course, you know, the important thing to note here is I'm looking at an active active channel here that's just looking at system events everything i want to do within a system whether it's a resource whether it's a rule or a dashboard or a report or an active channel i can view log log events correlation events or system events that becomes incredibly powerful when we start to understand how we start building out and how we start mapping out some of these more sophisticated use cases so for example if i wanted to have a dashboard that showed for example cases and how cases how many were created who opened them which ones were closed and so on that would actually be very simple for me to do a case is a track of, of understanding who's investigating what particular alerts are being generated. To open a case generates a system event. To uh, very easily then just have a dashboard to reflect that is actually very simple and very straightforward as well. So what we can do is we can just have a look at some of these dashboards for a second. So I look at my foundation. I can see there's a whole bunch load of here. I can see there's a whole bunch load of dashboards there as well. So that's great, but you'll see the workflow case tracking 
and we can look at the particular cases. So we can look at case status, just open the dashboard. And there we have a dashboard. So we can see that there are a whole bunch of uh, cases. We can see there's a total of 44 queued. We can see that there's a sum of uh, a particular uh, priority and so on. This is all driven by system events, not through correlation events, not through base events. This is driven by system events. So when we start thinking about that, everything is an, is an event, everything is an element that we can use within a resource, and everything that we can show as part of how this actually operates, it becomes much more flexible for us to actually understand how we can start uh, manipulating and, and using the console uh, to solve some of our more advanced use case issues. So uh, I'm going to just jump back to my, my demo view of my actual log data for a second. And we can see all the information here. So if I just unpause that, uh, press play, we'll see all the data there. Now again, so I just wanted to refresh as I'm looking at these uh, resources, I'm looking at, for example, active channel, it is going to be filtered. So this is the case here. I'm actually seeing that there are, there are, are filtered events based on what I'm interested in. So these are not internal or system events. These are just events, correlated events or log events. So now we start thinking about effectively everything that we're looking at, everything we're observing within the system is effectively triggered off a filter. Uh, whether that's in a rule or a dashboard or anything we want to do as part of that. So now we can start to think about how we build out, how we use the console, how we look at the data. We don't want to look at all the data. We don't want to look at this kind of view and try to figure out what's going on because it's constantly refreshing and updating. What we want to do is we want to understand what that means and what's relevant to the particular view that we want to have. So uh, that's why we've broken it down into panels. That's why we have this filter mechanism. That's why we have a differentiation between base, correlation, and system events, and how we can manipulate and how we can show those events within the console to reflect the use cases we're interested in. So that's the very first part of this initial walkthrough of around what the console does and how we can mani manipulate and how we can use that and how we would actually use that within the real world. So that's a very quick introduction. So the base things to, to, to consider three panels, uh, navigator, viewer, and inspect edit, and then we can jump between those. The reason for having those allows us to create content, create things, and move backwards and forwards. We've got multiple tabs within each one of those views, either at the top or sometimes at the bottom as well. And then we've got this toolbar that allows us to jump through the various elements. But obviously, everything is available within the resources, within the actual drop-down here, or as we actually access the individual events, we can scroll up and down through the particular view here. Uh, we can actually just limit that view based around what we say, this, this empty rows, or we could even just limit the actual set of fields that you can view by using what we call a field set as well. I'll talk more about that later. That initially is the, is the initial stage of just walking through this. So I'll leave it at that and we'll come back with the next session in a minute. Thank you.